I recently had a question about creating a function that will support any number of arguments. There are two common approaches to this type of function and we will look at both in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all of my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you feel so inclined, support the channel. There is a link for doing that as well. Now, JavaScript provides at least two ways to access the arguments of a function, even if you don't know how many arguments there are. The arguments property has been used for years now and works great. However, we can now use the spread operator to access all the arguments that are passed in as well. And we're going to look at both examples. Let's first look at arguments. So for our example, let's say that I wanted to be able to call a function sum and I wanted to be able to pass in any number of arguments. It didn't matter how many and it would simply sum those and then return the total. So let's go ahead and set up a function that will handle that. So up here, we call it sum. Notice, no variables inside the parentheses. We're not indicating that we're going to grab anything. There's no signature for that function. But even so, we can still access those. And that's using the arguments property of functions. That is something that is available for us. Now, the arguments property returns an array-like set of values. So they're array-like. We can access them like an array. We don't have access to all of the methods that arrays have, such as reduce, which would be a great way to sum those values. But we could convert it to an array and then do that. Or we can just use the for of loop, which works on array like sets because they're iterables. And that's what I'm going to do here. So, first off, I'm going to declare a total. I'm going to set it equal to zero. Now we use the for of loop. And we're going to take i of arguments. That is the property that is available. That basically contains all of the arguments that are passed into the function. And so what do we do with those? Well, we simply add them to the total. So i will contain each of those values as it iterates through that array-like structure. It will contain each value we'll simply add it to total. And then at the end, we're going to return total like that. Now let's put this in a console log statement so we can see what value we get as a return value for a call to that. Go ahead and save that. I'm gonna refresh this and then we'll open the console. And we get 390, if we look at that really quick, 70, 120, 200, 300, 390, yeah. So we're getting access to each of those arguments. Now if we added another, we should get 450 now, sure enough. So it doesn't matter how many arguments are there, this has access to all of them. And so that is a common way to access access those arguments and that's been the traditional way. However, there is one drawback to the arguments property. Let me show you that. So if I turn this into an arrow function, let's see what happens. Uncaught reference error, arguments is not defined. So arguments is not a property of arrow functions we can't access it if it's an arrow function. So this has to be a regular function in order to use arguments. Now let's look at the second method using the spread operator. 
So I'm going to set up a new function, give it the same name. Here's our structure. Now, in order to use a spread operator, what we do is we use it inside of the parentheses. And what it does is it gathers all the arguments and places them into an array. So I can put three dots, args, and then all the arguments get placed into args as an array. Now, this is an actual array, not array-like. This is an actual array. So since that is the case, we can go ahead and use the reduce function of arrays to sum those. Now, if you're not familiar with that, I'll include a link to a tutorial on the reduce function. Also, if you're not familiar with the spread operator, I have a tutorial just on that as well that I'll link to. But basically what the spread operator is doing in this case is it's grabbing all the arguments and, and forming them into an array and it places them into this variable. So now we can access that variable and we can use reduce to cycle through all of the values in the variable. Now with reduce, we have to pass in a function. And this function takes two arguments. This time I'm going to use a narrow function here. Two arguments. The first argument is the value from the array. So as it iterates through the array, it passes these in one at a time. And the second argument is the accumulator. And that accumulator is, is cycled through each iteration. So it's available for each iteration. So because of that, we can set our function up like this. We simply do val plus sum. It adds those two together, returns that as the accumulator. Then it does val plus sum again, returns that here, does val plus sum again, and so on until it's done all of the values. In the end, we get the total. Now, with reduce, in addition to passing in a function like we've done here, we can pass in an initial value for that accumulator for this right here. And we want that initial value to be zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results of this. We're getting an undefined. Let's take a look at that. The reason we're getting an undefined is because I have not returned a value from this function yet. So nothing's being returned from the call to this function. And so console log simply displays undefined because that's what is returned by default is undefined. So I can fix that by simply doing return. And there we get our 450. So that works for us. Now, if I wanted to, I could convert this to an arrow function. It would still work. I wouldn't normally do that. I don't like arrow functions inside of arrow functions. I think they're harder to read, but I could easily do that like this, and this would still work. So the spread operator doesn't have a limitation in regards to arrow functions like arguments does. And so this one works in every case. So that was a quick look at creating a function that can handle any number of arguments. I hope this simple discussion was helpful. If so, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Remember, the discount links to all my courses are in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.